Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. Woo, woo. How's everybody doing? Good? All right, good. And once again, a reminder, make sure you uh, are keeping those cell phones away. And it's being recorded just for the sake of uh, making sure that we remind you about that. However, um, being that it's the first of the month, get your stuff and get out the way. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's the first of the month. All right, everybody happy? Good. So once again, warm-up number 27. And if you notice, there's a couple of things that I'm bringing in already because we're moving on. Let's go, Mario. Number one and two, uh, one A and B says simplify to lowest terms. Just copy that. I'm going to go over it. Number two, factor. Number three, factor. You should know how to do those by now. Number four, it says solve for y and evaluate with the domain negative 1, 0, and 5. I'm going to go over that one. And number five, add or subtract. By now, you should know how to do that because that's elementary stuff, but I'll go over it with my process. So copy that, please. As you're finishing uh, numbers 2, 3, and 5, let me go over number 1 and 1A, 1B. So Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. It says simplify to lowest terms. And it says first factor each number first. All right? So look what I'm going to do first with this fraction. I'm going to think about it like this. What would be the greatest common factor between 40 and 72? Talking to the neighbor, what would be a greatest common factor between 40 and 72. What would be a greatest common factor? All right. Looks like everybody said eight. Hands if you said eight. Yes. So therefore, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to write 40 like this. Eight times five and 72. Oh, frozen. Let it go. Let it go. There you go. Eight times five. And 72 is 8 times 9. Are they factored now? Yes, two factors, two factors. So now I'm able to do this. What is 8 over 8? 1. Which means it leaves us with what? 5 nines. Copy that, please. Pretty good, huh? All right, B, I'm going to look at the denominator first. What would be my GCF for these two numbers? Tell your neighbor, what would be our GCF? GCF for these two numbers. All right, looks like Caitlin's got it, Gio's got it. But I'm going to do this one, being that it's our first warm-up. So these two can be divided by 7, but both of these also have x cubed. So that's my GCF. GCF is x cubed and 7. So if we divide that by 7x cubed, we're left with x minus 4. How are we doing? Yes? All right. However, let's factor the numerator. What two numbers multiply to give me 21? Everyone. 3 times 7. That is correct. Now check this out. The x squared, I'm going to write it as x times x. The x cubed down here, I'm going to write it as x times x times x. So let me scribble this out. So check this out. What is 7 over 7? 1. What is 1x one over 1x? One, 1. 
What is 1x over 1x? 1. So what do we have in the numerator left? 3. What do we have in the denominator? 1x and the parentheses, which is x minus 4. Copy that, please. All right. All right, let's go over numbers two and three. Those are going to be a piece of cake because we've already been doing these already. Here it goes. Let me make some space. Here it goes. For number two, what do we check for? Standard form. Is it in standard form? Yes. Two, one, zero. Yes. Next, let's factor. We got 24 on top. Negative 5 on the bottom. So what two numbers multiply give me 24, then when you add them, give us negative 5. Anything? 24. That means these two need to be negative, both of them, but can we get a negative number here, no, there's nothing. I'll come back to that one. Let's do this one. Group, group, CTF for these two. X squared, that leaves us with X plus three. CTF for these two. Well, since this one has a negative, I'm gonna write negative one. That leaves us with X plus three. So, what's the same here and here? Well, x plus 3. What's left over? x squared minus 1. I'm going to come back to this one as well because there's something that we need to see here with properties, but I don't want to get us started because we need to move on. Today is going to be a packed session, so make sure you're staying focused and not on your Chromebooks and distracted. Let's go to number 4. It reads, solve for y. Let's do this one together, once again, for the sake of time. Here it goes. Line down the equal sign. We need to leave y by itself. What's next to it? The negative 9x. How can we cancel a negative 9x with a what? Positive 9x. We do that to both sides. We end up with negative 3y equals 9x plus 12. Next, bless you, we still need to leave the y by itself. What's the negative 3 doing? It's multiplying. So what is the inverse? Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. y equals 9x divided by negative 3 is negative 3x. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative all right did we solve for y yes there's y by itself are we done no mr q it says evaluate using this domain domain meaning look up those of you that forgot from years back domain means all x values domain means what all x values what x values are going to be using negative one zero and Five. So check this out. I'm going to take this equation. But instead of x, I'm going to use which value first? Negative 1. All right, let's simplify that. Here it goes. y equals, what is negative 3 times negative 1? 3. Bring down the minus 4. What is 3 minus 4? Negative 1. Let's do it again now with 0. y equals negative 3 times 0 minus 4. Once again, my next value is 0. Therefore, y equals negative 3 times 0 is 0 minus 4, so y equals negative 4. With that said, do the last one by yourself. Last value is 5. Let's see what you get.
All right, show your neighbor, see what they got. Y equals what? All right, let's see. Y equals negative 15 minus 4, so Y equals negative 19. Hands, have you got that? All right, good. And let's go to the last one. Here it goes. Last one says, Add or subtract. All right, I want you to do this one with me. Here it goes. First question, look up. What's a GCF between 25 and 20? Think about it. What is a GCF for those two numbers? Tell your neighbor, please. GCF. GCF for those two numbers. Let's see, let's go with uh, Mario. Woo, Mario in the house. So I'm gonna rewrite these two numbers using five. So instead of 25, I'm gonna write what? Five times five. And instead of 20, I'm gonna write what? Five times? It's correct, okay. Bring down the two, bring down the three, now check this out. Who remembers the rule for addition of fractions? We need to have a what? Common denominator, which means they need to look the same. Do they look the same? No. So question, what does this one have that this one needs? What does this one need from here? 1, 5. So put times 5 times 5. That is correct. Question. What does this one have that this one needs? The 4. So times 4 times 4. So let's rewrite these fractions. Ready? Here it goes. 4 times 2 is 8 for the numerator. 5 times 5 is 25 times 4. That's 100 plus, 3 times 5 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20 times 5, that's 100. Now that we have a common denominator, we focus on the numerator. Aww, what is 8 plus 15? 23, Michael Jordan, that is correct, over common denominator, 100. So from now on, guys, we're, I want you to practice this throughout the week because this is going to come in handy. Because think about this. It looks very simple, right? Yeah, Joseph is like, oh, I got this cue. But now imagine it with polynomials. <laughs> Anyways, copy the agenda, please. Agenda warm-up number 27, quadratic equations. Uh, home play is seven problems only. Once again, stay focused, please. It's going to go pretty fast. So do me a favor, have your Chromebooks out, put those away. We were going to use them today to exchange uh, ideas, but we're going to do that tomorrow. Today I just want you to follow along because it's packed. Okay? So warm-up number 27, quadratic equations. Tonight's home play, seven problems only. Okay, we good? All right. Copy the uh, access code for your home play, 2593E, 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 2593E. This is your home play for tonight. <laughs> Let's go, Geo. We got this. Oh, yeah. All right, get a Cornell note ready, please. I can solve and graph quadratic equations by graphing using square roots and factoring, since we're already experts at all that. <laughs> Let's go. I can solve and graph quadratic equations by graphing using square roots and factoring. Three different methods. 
I can solve and graph quadratic equations by graphing using square roots and factoring. So what is our main idea, everyone? What are, what are we moving on to today? Quadratic equations. That is correct. All right. And today is basically solving quadratic equations three different ways. What are the three different ways? By graphing, square roots, and factoring. Now, some of you are like, factoring, Mr. Q, that sounds familiar. Yeah. That's why, think about this. We already finished our benchmark, and everything we did with a benchmark were expressions. And where are we headed? To equations and functions. Yeah, to solve stuff. Let's go. That's why you need to know your stuff. Right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? All right. So with that said, get a... Uh, a Fourier model, write quadratic equations. Let's start with that. Let's find out what they are. What are quadratic equations? Definition. Quadratic equations are two variable equations where the highest degree is 2. Quadratic equations are two variable equations where the highest degree is 2. Quadratic equations are two variable equations where the highest degree is 2. Quadratic equations are two variable equations, highest degree of two. Quadratic equations are two variable equations, highest degree of two. Quadratic equations are two variable equations, highest degree of two. All right, without looking at your notes, tell your neighbor the definition. What is the definition of quadratic equations? Can't hear you, Caesar. What other? What? Come on now. Equations. Ooh. All right, copy these examples. Examples, x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals y x squared minus 9 equals y, and y equals 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. Who? He's leaving? Okay. Then copy these non-examples. And we'll talk them over right now. All right, if you're finishing up writing those done examples, here goes the definition one more time. Quadratic equations are two variable equations where the highest degree is 2. Let me double check that. Let's see if it's true. Let's see. Here's an equation. It says two variables, x and y, highest degree of 2. Let's see. What degree is this one? 2, 1, 0, 1. The highest degree was 2. That is correct. Let's look at this one. Two variables, x and y, yes? Highest degree of 2. 2, 0, 1. Highest degree is 2. Let's look at this one. Two variables. Degrees, 1, 2, 1, 0. Highest degree is 2. Okay. So with that said, look at these non-examples. Tell your neighbor why those are not quadratic equations. Why are these three not quadratic equations? Talk it over your neighbor, see what they say. Then Dana's going to get us started. Why are those three not quadratic equations? Talk it over your neighbor. All right, let's start with this one right here, Dana. Why is that one not a quadratic equation? It doesn't have two variables. That's one thing. So far, so good. What else? The highest degree is 2. There it is. 
So look at the examples. Look at that one. Doesn't have an equal sign. So that means this is only an expression. That is correct. All right. How about this one? Popular neighbor, let them know why this one's not a quadratic equation. And then Denise is going to enlighten us. Why is this one not a quadratic equation? Why is that one not a quadratic equation? All right, Denise, what do you think? The high degree is in two. That is correct. And what else do you see? There's no squared, that's why the highest degree is not two. But what else is it missing aside from that? Second variable, that is correct. So therefore, hashtag, it has to be two variables and hashtag the highest degree has to be two. Two variables, highest degree two. Ooh -wee. Ready, y'all ready? How did you guys learn how to swim? You guys know how to swim? Some of y'all? No? What? Come on now. Yeah, there's one way that they show you how to swim. They bring you in slowly. Oh, come on, get in the water. And the second one is that they just grab you and they throw you in the water. <laughs> and you're like, you're learning as you go. <laughs> Anyways, that's what we're going to do today. Let's go. Step one number one. Solve using square roots and graphing. Let's go. X squared minus 9 equals Y. Copy that one, please. We're going to do that one both ways. I'm going to do this one first just to make sure we got it, and we'll go from there. Just copy it, please. All right, here we go. I'm going to solve this using two methods. What are the methods? One called square roots and the other called graphing. So write your utensils down, look up to the screen. Ready? All right. Step one, being that it's polynomials, I need to make sure that one of the sides is in standard form. Here it goes. Second degree, zero degree is in standard form. Yes. Step two, I need to set it equal to zero. Look up, please. So basically, I'm replacing y with what? Zero. Step three, isolate the variable. I need to leave the variable by itself. So that means I need to leave this by itself. So what do I need to do with the minus 9? Well, add 9, add 9. Bring this down. I need to cancel the squared using the inverse. What is this? Uh, the inverse of the square, square root, square root. That leaves us with x equals plus minus 3. This is called solving using square roots. Copy that, please. All right, here goes the process one more time. Solving by square roots. What do I do? Make sure it's in standard form. There it is. Set it equal to zero. Change the y to zero. From there, isolate the x or leave x by itself by using inverse operations. Add minus 9. What is the inverse? Add 9 to each side. Bring down the x squared. That leaves us with 9. Square root, because that's the inverse of a square, and we end up with x equals plus minus Three. All right. So far so good, yes? From one to five, how comfortable are you with that? You're like, dude, we've been doing these on the warm-ups. Hello. Second method is known as graphing. Your favorite. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Second method, the same thing. It needs to be in standard form. However, now for the second method, I make a input output table and you're just paying attention you'll copy right after ready 
Here it goes. Step one, I'm going to substitute 0 for x. So I'm going to take my equation. Substitute 0 for x. What is 0 squared? 0 minus 9 equals y. What is 0 minus 9? Negative 9 equals y. Are we there so far? Next, I'm going to substitute 0 for y. Following Gabriel, you good? Here it goes. X squared minus nine equals two zero. Do we know how to solve this? Yeah, we just did it. Is that correct? So what is the answer? X equals plus minus three. What does that mean, Mr. Q? That I need a positive three and I need a negative 3. Are we there so far? Copy that, please. And make sure you point to the work that you did for this part over here. All right, once again, for graphing. What was the step? Make sure that the equation is in standard form. There it is. Second, make an input output table, x and y, and I start by substituting 0 for x. Here it is. We end up with something equals to y. There it is. Second step, I need to substitute 0 for y. Solve, and I end up with two different x values. That's why 0 is positive 3 and 0 is negative 3. All right, now we're ready to graph. Okay, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Here it goes. I'm going to graph this. Students, coordinate plane, coordinate plane students. This is an informal introduction. We have X and we have Y. Yes? All right. My first value, 0 of X, negative 9 of Y. 0 of X, negative 9 is down here. That's known as my Y intercept. Y intercept. Why is it called the Y intercept, Mr. Q? That's where our graph is going to cross the Y axis. Let me put the other two points, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, negative 3 and 0. And what are those called? These are my x-intercepts. That's where our graph crosses the x-axis. So let me sketch my graph. Look up from left to right. Students, parabola, parabola students, copy that, please. All right, so let's recap. Let's look at the first method, solving using x uh, square roots. What did we do? Check to see if it's standard form. Set it equal to 0. Leave x by itself using inverse operations. And what was the last step? Square roots. That's why that method is called using square roots. Second method, using graphing. It needs to be in standard form, but this time we get a table. Start with x and y. We substitute 0 for x. There it is, into the equation. Solve. Whatever is left, we, it goes there. 
We write the equation again. Now we substitute 0 for y and solve. Did we solve this? Mr. Q, I didn't see you solve it. Yeah, it's over here. I wasn't going to do the work again. It's already here. And we ended up with what? Positive 3 and negative 3. So we end up with a positive 3 for 0 and a negative 3 for 0. What is the one in red? That's our y-intercept. What is the one in blue? Those are our x-intercepts. And that's how you graph. However, it says we're doing what? Solving. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to point to that point and to that point, and you're going to write solution. Solution. What is the solution to that equation? Wherever the graph intersects the x-axis. Solution to any equation, which is a quadratic, is where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with these two methods? Got some fours, some fives, yeah. Okay, let's do another one. Copy this one. Example one q x squared minus sixty four equals y. X squared minus sixty four equals y. I'll give you a head start. I want you to solve it using square roots. All right, check with your neighbor, see what they got for x on square roots method. All right, and I'll pick someone at random to help me out with this one. Let's go, uh, Gabriel. Go, what do I do first? Standard form, let's see, second degree, zero degree, yes. Okay, then what do I do? Turn the y into 0. x squared minus 64. Hands if you got it to right there. All right, continue, Elia. Add 64 to both sides. We got x squared equals 64. And our last step, pass it to someone. Who? Joseph, last step. Square root the, this side and square root the other side. That is correct. So x equals what, Joseph? Plus minus 8. Hands if you got that. From 1 to 5, I'll come to where you with this. Yeah, 5, 4s. Go to graphing. Let's write it again. x squared minus 64 equals y. All right. I'm going to write on the side x and y. What do I do next? Think about it. Tell you never what is the next step in the graphing process. Graphing process. Then Joseph's going to pass it to someone. Looks like, like he's picking Mariah. Are you picking Mariah? Oh, no. Okay, my bad. Mario, what do I do first? Very good. Is it in standard form? Yes. What do I do next? Change the x to 0, or we substitute 0 for x. So let's see, 0 squared minus 64 equals y. Therefore, that's still 0, and that leaves us with negative 64 equals y. There it is. What do I do next? Talking with your neighbor, and Mario's going to pass it to someone. <laughs> Let's go. Talk it over to your neighbors. Pass it to someone, Mario. Geo. Yeah, zero on the Y. That is correct. So zero on the Y. 
x squared minus 64, and now we need to solve this. Did we already solve this? Yeah? So what do we get at the end, everyone? x equals plus minus 8. That means 0 is positive 8, and I need another 0, and that's going to be what? Negative 8. All right, graph that. All right, show your neighbor your graph really quick. See what you got. Should be done by now. All right, Gio's going to help us out with this one. Zero and negative 64, which way do I go, Gio? Bless you. Down, yes, way down here. Negative 64. That's my y-intercept. And then? A to the right, A to the left, and then we graph our parabola. Nice and neat like mine. There it is. Make sure it crosses to that point. All right. However, are we done? No, tell your neighbor what to do. What do we do at the end? What do we do at the end? Label it. This is our what? Solution. Solution. Woo! For one to five, I'll come to you with these two processes. Five, four, five. Yeah, this is neat practice. Okay. And our last one. Y'all ready? Too easy, too easy. Copy this one, please. Example two. x squared plus 9x plus 20 equals y. x squared plus 9x plus 20 equals y. All right, stay focused. It's going to go pretty fast. Here we go. Gabriel, step one. Standard form. Let's see. 2, 1, 0 is in standard form. Yes, equal to y. Okay. Step two. To solve any quadratic equation, we always set it equal to zero. So change the y to zero. Let's do this one together. x squared plus 9x plus 20. So step one, standard form. Step two, equal to zero. Step three, factor. Tell your neighbor what number goes on top. Very good. 20. One number goes underneath, nine. So, factors of 20, one times 20, two times 10, four times five. Which one of those pairs adds up to nine? Four and five, right? Therefore, x squared becomes what? x times x, is that correct? And what else do I write? Plus 5, or sorry, let me write the 4 just to keep it in order. Plus 4 and plus 5. So far, the good. But now we have equal to 0. Are we there so far? Last step. Let me ask you a question. Look up. A times B equal to zero. A times what equal to zero? What could B be? Zero. What if I said something times B equal to zero? What could A be? Zero. So therefore, if you didn't know this, A times B equal to zero, could A be zero? Could B be zero? Therefore, this times this equal to zero. So what could this be? A, and this one could be B. So therefore, X plus 4 equal to zero. X plus 5 equal to zero. 
We set each one of those factors equal to zero and solve. Whew. Minus four, minus four, x equals negative four, minus five, minus five, x equals negative five. These are my solutions, also known as x-intercepts, also known as zeros, also known as roots. Yes, you need to write that. You're like, that's it, Ms. Q? Yeah, you already know how to do the factoring, right? All we added was the zero and set them equal to zero and solve. From one to five, I'll come to borrow you with these. Five, fours, fours, five. Okay, let's do one more. We still have time for one more. Last one. Here you go. Do this one by yourself. X squared plus 7X plus 10 equals Y. X squared plus 7X plus 10 equals Y. We've got about 45 seconds. X squared plus 7X plus 10 equals Y. I'll walk you through the process. Standard form, yes. Next step. Deal. Zero. Change the y to zero. And now we do the factoring. Ten. Seven. What two numbers multiply? Give me ten. And when you add them, give us seven. 2 and 5, 5 and 2, so then we write x plus 2, x plus 5, all that equal to 0. And then Gabriel's going to have us finish it off. Go, Gabriel. Answer. Negative 2. And the last one, Mario, negative five. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>